everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 88 where you send me your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them in the next hour. Let's get right to it. First one is called Flat Earth Newsletter? Question mark. Mark, some members of the Flat Earth community should be gathering email addresses of Flat Earth interested parties. YouTube has these addresses, but I don't expect them to share them. Possibly you could collect the Facebook, Twitter, email, and name with each address. That's from Stan. Stan, that is a really great idea. Except for one thing, 90% of our community is still in the closet and they don't want to be found. So they want to remain anonymous. Uh, so collecting emails is going to not necessarily be counterproductive, but it's just not going to help much because we're not going to get any clear idea of where everybody is. You know, we're just putting this stuff out there and people kind of listen anonymously, secretly, much like the Spice Girls. But again, nice idea, like, like the fact that you want to collect a database. Uh, also, you got to remember that you're talking about the conspiracy crowd. And conspiracy crowds don't generally like to be part of any one database. Not that everything isn't being collected already. Next one is called comments on article concerning astronaut quitting space program. Howdy, Mark. I thought you'd find this interesting. Astronaut candidate quits. Former SpaceX, former Antarctica ice core sampler got into space after the Challenger incident. Read the comments, though. That's the interesting part. And that is from the Houston Chronicle dot com. And it's called first astronaut candidate in 50 years resigns. And he yeah. And that's from Nikolai. Thank you, Nikolai. If you guys want to look it up, it, it, the article is a little while, a you know, little, little bit old because it takes me a while to get through the emails. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very true. It's an interesting, interesting little space story. Why, in fact, why would you even tell people that you had a candidate resign? Why not just keep it real quiet? Why release it to the press at all? Interesting. Interesting. This one's called, this would be worth looking into. All right. It's, good. it's just a Google link and it says astronaut quits NASA. Yep. Same thing. Astronaut quits, quits NASA. It was quite a little story in the space community. I thought it was curious that only one guy out of 50 years, you'd think somebody else would, you know, run into family problems or uh, health problems or something, and they would quit because of that. But no, it was only this guy, first time in 50 years. And yet another one. First NASA astronaut quits. Check this out, Mark. Read on or off air. Mark, I wonder if he is a secret flat earther and realized he was wasting his time. He did say it's for personal reasons, but why would anyone who has secured their dream uh, come true let their personal reasons get the best of them? Full article here. It's interesting. And yeah, it was USA Today. They ran the story as well. Yeah, it's an interesting story. Not as interesting as flat earth, but interesting. All right, let's see how many more people <laughs> sent this to me back in the day. Uh, okay, not this one. Thank God. This one's called Flat Earth Geology and Solar Cycles. Mark, firstly, a huge thank you for all you do. Keep up the good work. I am still fairly new to this concept and sorting out what it all means is proving daunting to say the least. I came to Flat Earth through a series of interests beginning with archaeology and mainstream treatment of out-of-place artifacts and their discoverers, which led to conspiracies, which led, well, you get the idea, smiley face. My first question is, do plate tectonics work on a flat earth model? Along with flat earth, I have come to the realization that contrary to mainstream media shouting that people are causing climate change, it is actually a function of solar cycles. Hmm. Which brings my second question. What is the sun actually and how far away is it? I understand your main thing is to wake people to the concept of flat earth and the rest of this email may not be within your scope of study. But if you have any info that could point me in the right direction for this type of research, it would be greatly appreciated as I struggle to tie certain broader aspects of flat earth together. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. I mean, everybody, nobody can tie it all together. Everybody's got different pieces of the puzzle. Uh, let's see. These and other questions came to me as I watched a YouTube presentation by Dr. Robert Scotch. S-C-H-O-C-H. Scotch? Scotch? Uh, if you are unfamiliar with Dr. Scotch, he is a tenured pre professor at Boston University with degrees in geology, geophysics, and anthropology. There is a short bio with his credentials in the description of the linked video. The info presented in the linked video points to geologic records that seem to be evidence 
Evidence extreme solar events as the cause of the end of the last ice age, solar outbursts instead of comet impacts, which fits nicely into both an enclosed Earth model and climate change issues, as could easily provide a plausible explanation of how pre-ice age advanced civilizations were destroyed very quickly, causing us to become a species with amnesia and therefore easily lied to about the shape of our Earth. Due to health and financial reasons, I am limited to the internet for this type of information, so any links or suggestions of people that could point me in the right direction to study these aspects of FE further would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for your time and attention. Sincerely, Sherry Garrett. She actually puts a Shakespeare quote at the end. Our remedies oft in ourselves do lie. Hmm. Well then. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the sun, you want to you have a little more insight into that. I would look up a guy named Eric Dollard. Very interesting, where he talks about the electromagnetic universe and how the, the sun is basically just a, a light bulb, a transformer that's gaining energy from somewhere else and that there's no fusion happening there. thought it was very, very interesting. I also thought it was interesting that he was being interviewed from a car. Uh, not, not a car, just in a parking lot. I think just a, an abandoned car. I don't know if he was living in there or what, or if, if that was like his, his uh, off-the-grid lounge chair. Uh, which is an interesting way to do it. But uh, yeah, look up Eric Dollard, D-O-L-L-A-R-D. This one's called Jeffro Flat shared a photo with you. And he shared a photo with me about a guy named Jesse Ratfield, who's got a master's degree in physics. Uh, okay. Yeah. He, he, he says that there's nothing else to it there's no challenge or anything like that just says that this guy's got a um a master's degree in physics okay jeff Rowe, what do you want me to do with it i got i got no instructions there but thank you this one's called right on <laughs> and the body of the email says <clears throat> right on <laughs> okay and that's from Sohila. Sohila Nazir. Huh. Well then. This one's called Check Out My Book, How to Tell Time by the Moon. Mark, I've made videos out of most of it on my channel. There's a playlist of the same name. And the video is called... Let me see. I'm just going to click on it real quick. The video is called... Oh, it's just a channel. Channel name. He just took me to the channel, and the channel is called Kennedy Walker. How to Tell Time by the Moon. All right. I will check that out when I get a chance. This one's called Watch USA Only 50% the Size They Say Airplanes Are Flying Slow Proof on YouTube. And that's from Joseph. Thank you for that link. This one's called Perth Stopover on World First flight linking South America and Asia to boost Washington tourism. That's from Dean. And again, you get, again, I don't, I, I love brief emails. I do. I really, really do. But if you're going to send me just a link, you might want to put a little context around it. Just, just frame it for me a little bit. Cause otherwise I have to guess what's going on here. And did he send a follow-up email? Uh, I don't know if he did. I don't think he did. Uh, this one's called flathead. Mark, I am still not a full-on flathead, but I would like to thank you for all your work in getting people to at least open their eyes. We have been lied to for many years, too many lies, too many cover-ups, 9-11, NASA, uh, Vietnam, and so on and on and on. We just accept what they tell us. Easier to just get on with life and get screwed over by the rich and elite. I am hooked on your theory. And it does make a lot of sense. They are obviously hiding something big. I have sent you a link from my mobile showing plans for a... Oh, okay. So this is the same guy. Showing plans for a direct flight from Perth, Australia to South America. The flight duration and distance seems to be as it should. Can you check it out and get back to me again? Thanks and good luck. Regards, Dean. All right. I will check it out. This one's called Can I Help? Mark, I'm Michael Breck. In... In, in my heart and all my life, I have felt to be somewhat part of all that's good. Please show me how to help us more. Okay. I will send him a link to more Flat Earth videos. I don't know how far along he is, but I never, I don't think I heard from him since then. 
This one's called Coming Astronaut Series on Hulu. Mark, just received this in my uh, mail. Thought of you. Netflix and Hulu are part of the FE conspiracy, among others, of, of course. And that's from Reggie. I don't know. I, again, I don't think they're part of, you know, saying that uh, a television network is actually part of the Flat Earth conspiracy. Nah, I don't think so. Uh, letting silent producers that help work on space-ish films... Yes, the silent producers are, but most of the people you want to you want to keep ignorant, you know, compartmentalize, uh, need to know. Flat Earth is the biggest need to know thing. So no, no, not. Now you can't say that everybody in Netflix and everybody in Hulu are are part of the Flat Earth conspiracy, or all scientists, or all astronomers, or all physics professors. But I like your energy, like like where you're going there. This one's called Touch the Dome Experiment. Hello, Mark. I've always loved nature, and by my observations, I could never understand the science that I was taught in school or documentaries. I fly quite a bit, and I have seen the sun nestled in the clouds and seen the flat horizon over and over again. On one trip to Borneo, I couldn't understand why we flew from L.A. back over Alaska and then down to Hong Kong, then down to the island of Borneo. There you go. It never made any sense in the globe model. When I discovered Flat Earth, I was like... I could have had a V8. Okay, that dates you right there. The fact that you would use the old V8 commercials from the late 70s, early 80s, but uh, love that. Uh, when I saw Flat Earth videos, everything clicked. Of course it's Flat Earth. I brought the subject up to my husband, and boy, did he get angry. Yeah, it's because, yeah. Got the first rule of Flat Club. It's not a joke. That's no reflection on our marriage by any means. And once in a while, he'll ask me if I still think the earth is flat. I tell him yes. Ha! The question I have for experiments is, what about an air balloon to the firmament to video record touching it, banging on it, something perhaps with an extended pole? <laughs> yeah, because that extra 10 feet, that'll make the difference. I can imagine it's very uh, cold, yes, and oxygen will be needed. Any thoughts? Oh, you mean actually going up there physically? Physically with a with a with like a pool skimmer pole <laughs> and tapping on the dome? You'd have to get up there pretty high. you got to remember uh, your... Even the Felix Bumgarter thing was at, what, 130,000 feet? And that's not even... Is that 20 miles? I think it's 20 miles. Because 10,000 feet would be uh, about 56,000. Uh, 56, uh, yeah, a little over 20 miles. So uh, if you believe the the Go Fast rocket, I mean, that's minimum. Go Fast rocket's at 70 miles. You'd have to get three up three times higher than that. So no. No, I no. Uh, let's see, and that's from Christy Gray in Tacoma, Washington. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> Love the fact that you're uh, you and your husband are going back and forth on that. That's awesome. Moving forward, this one's called Patricia told me to email you. Oh, don't don't listen to Patricia. She's just she's not a, not a good person. Uh, this one's called, uh, or it starts with, Dear Mark, hi, I have been messaging with Patricia, and I mentioned that I had tried to register on closeworld.com and never received a confirming email. I got into Flat Earth earlier by listening to your Coast to Coast AM interview. I'm currently producing, proofing a book. I have written on our favorite subject and entitled Flat Earth Through Dummies 101. I have a website, Flat Earth Through Dummies 101.com, works in, work in progress. I'm registered for the Denver conference. Yay, go Denver! It just so happens my son lives in Denver. Well, okay, there you go. I live in Miami, Florida, Lauder I'm sorry, Miami, Fort Lauderdale area of South Florida. I'm going to try registering your website again. I'll try to call your show next week. Can't wait to meet you in Denver. Thank you for opening my eyes to Flat Earth. And that's from Elaine. And she puts a cat, smiling cat face, a glass of wine, and what could be a block of cheese. I don't know what the combination there is, but, you know, wine and cheese with cats, that sounds like a fun evening. This one's called Undeniable Proof. If you haven't seen it, let's see how big this email is. Uh, I think we can read part of it. Hi, Mark. Well, you were the one with your clues that made me think. I wrote to you, then you reposted unusual to find this kind of integrity. Oh, then you responded. Uh, comma, uh, I'm, I'm adding things and uh, unusual to find this kind of integrity in our world today. I don't know if that's integrity or if it's uh, obsessive compulsive. I already knew that I'd been lied to about everything, having had 20 years of listening to alternative media. You see, by this time, I had spent 14 years in a third world prison. 
because you see my wife and I had done something that most that fall victim don't. We survived and one of our assailants didn't would be a hell of a book. It was quite a battle surviving, but this is, I was so naive. I actually believe that if you always tell the truth and have the undeniable evidence to back it up, you must win. So you see, when I watched your clues for the first time, I said to myself, yeah, that's about right. Your clues made a hell of a lot more sense to start with than the ridiculous curved ball of water. I've always had an open mind, but I did have a terrible error in my thinking, believing that the truth with evidence must win does not people would prefer the absurd and the ridiculous yeah yeah if you have the conditioning yes as is the case with the flat earth isn't it it's really hard to find logical and ras rational thinking people nowadays it appears that it makes no difference how concrete how undeniable the proof and evidence is they will not recognize or see it they will still continue to fight back with totally absurd arguments and zero evidence to support their position here is the perfect example if the earth was really a ball according to the published data that supports it then there is an example to prove 100 percent that there is absolutely no curvature have you seen the data by Exalt Wireless? No, I have not. Uh, you can find it on this video and even a lot of government documents that also support the fact that the Earth is not a ball. I mean, this is it. What more is there to say? It's called Do Official Government Documents Confirm Flat Earth in the Firmament? It's under Rob Skiba on YouTube, but with Pastor Dean Odell presenting it, he does prefer refer to the Bible some but there is also a lot of other good evidence there aside from that. It says here that Exalt shatters world record for microwave link distance. They sent a signal from Cyprus to Lebanon from the transmitter to the receiver a distance of 146 miles, which would calculate it at 8 inches per mile squared to be 12,575 feet or 2.38 miles. This would be far below the curve of the Earth if it was really a ball, so it's 100% impossible. This is an absolute undeniable point. How can this be denied? If there's anything that can show this information to be incorrect, I'd like to see it. If so, these people that fight for their ball shouldn't, should present it. What could be more straightforward and simple? Would this company be lying about this to sell their product? Eh, or they're just ignorant. Uh, this would be the only reason for this evidence not to stand up. Obviously, they are not even thinking about a flat earth or the impossibility of their system working on a ball earth. They built this and never gave a thought to the fact that it couldn't work according to the published data on the globe earth. No one does, right? Is there any reason to go further into a debate on anything else? This is a fact. And if their mind is so indoctrinated that they would reject this information, why continue to demonstrate other proofs? A lot of curvature tests are still being done here it is already done here exalt has already done it and they have done this curvature test a greater distance because they had the resources to get it done and it wasn't even their goal the deliberate dumbing down of america has been well done take care donnie and again i don't think i know lots of people listening will probably uh, disagree it's like no there is a dumbing down of america it's like, nah, I don't think it's, I think it's a, I wouldn't call it dumbing down. I'd just say that they're being fed the wrong information. Just think of it like, people know a lot of information. We absorb a huge amount of information. It's just what you choose to, to eat. Uh, so it's kind of like media junk food is what people are going after. Yeah, they can tell you quarterback ratings and the schedule for their, their local sports team and the, what the Kardashians are doing and all the characters of Jersey Shore and, you know, all this other media. But most of it is fluff. I, mean, I should know. I mean, I've absorbed tons and tons of that. But I also like uh, eating the good stuff. And so I don't think it's, I don't necessarily think it's dumbing down. It's just what they've decided to eat. I mean, if you eat Cheetos your whole life, it's not going to be good. It's, it's not going to end well. And you're only going to know Cheetos. And you're not, you know, and so when all of a sudden somebody puts something really, you know, wonderful in front of you, you're like, what's that? That looks weird. I'm not eating that. So there you go. That's my restaurant analogy because I worked in a restaurant for a few years back in the day. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Scott Gold. I live in New Jersey. I am 38. Right to the point. Within the last six months, I've become very interested in Flat Earth. I am no longer a skeptic. I do believe it to be flat. I wanted to say thanks for the videos and presentations because you're right. It changes your perspective in life. For me, I mean, there was a whole bunch of things that just changed my mind, but the flight paths alone should give anyone who is not a skeptic of the globe idea pause. Anyway... 
Not that I necessarily need further convincing, but unless the powers that be come forward with it, I doubt it happens. One question for you is why not get someone to circumnavigate Antarctica or even fly from, say, South Africa to Perth or from Buenos Aires to South Africa recording their flight in time? Also strange as as it is, I feel like all my old interests, uh, sci-fi and a lot of hobbies, I just don't feel them anymore. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, I didn't even watch, and people saying, oh, poor baby. No, I didn't even want to watch Solo, probably because The Last Jedi just completely ruined the series for me, and that franchise is going down the tubes. Uh, but I, I just didn't really feel like watching it. I mean, yeah, I watched the last um, uh, Avengers movie. Well, not the not the final, final one. I probably should watch that one. Uh, I sort of would enjoy a friend to discuss things with, but we tried bringing the subject up only to get looked at at like I was losing it. You know, I actually stumbled upon a YouTube video about a flat earth. And when I first saw the first thing I thought was, wow, dumb as there's pictures of the planet. Uh, anyway, thanks. And that's from Scott. Thanks, Scott. Moving on. This one's called small air leak detected on international space station. Okay. That shows you how far back my emails are right now. Uh, Mark, are they just listening to your videos and making things up to counter them? Give me a break. Uh, see you in November. Go dogs, Ryan. And yeah, it's the space.com article. Space station, small pressure leak, which somebody put their thumb in and then some epoxy because exposing, yeah, because you're going to punch a hole in the absolute vacuum of space and it's not going to rip all the oxygen out, including the oxygen in your lungs in the fraction of a second. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna be like a, a submarine where you have that tiny little hole and there's water coming in. Yeah, whatever. No. Flight Times. This one's called Flight Times. Mark, great opening talk at the Canada FE conference. Thank you. Uh, I have been a FE believer for around a year. Thank you that you are open to receive emails, etc. Being a Christian, I have been influenced by the Bible teaching in Genesis chapters 1 through 11, and Rob Skiba has helped me tremendously in this regard. My question relates to the flight time Santiago to Sydney, a flight that I flew on in 2014 with Qantas. The flight was direct from Santiago to Sydney and took somewhere around 12 hours on a 747. It just seems that your calculations in your video pertaining to flight times is at odds with my experience. Are they ex any explanations? Kind regards, David Huckler. Hucker. Hucker, H-U-C-K-E-R. I've never said that last name before, Hucker, um, which is interesting because I think it's an American name. Uh, yeah, when it comes again to, which is why I did Clue 9, it's not the flight times that I'm concerned with. It's the route, it, which means by the time I, when I did Clue 7, I said, look, there's very, very few, if any, uh, non-stop flights in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, from anywhere in Africa to South America and Australia, those three, those three things, because they should be crossing the major oceans down there. And people were going, no, no, there's some non-stops. So like, fine. There's like a handful of non-stops in 90% of the flights down there are connections. There's a handful of non-stops. That's not the part that concerns me. What concerns me is when the plane gets out over water, the latitude and longitude drop off which is impossible for a GPS system. There is no latitude and longitude coordinates when they get out over water. Why not? What you, at that point, you're, the route cannot be proven because literally the radar says, we don't know where the plane is. Now, the plane may be continuing on the path, and of course the pilots think they're flying in a certain direction, and they are, but it's just an estimate. And then the, the, the system will correct and calculate once they get close to land, and it'll slightly adjust. It's, oh, okay, we're, we're back in the right place. Uh, but the route cannot be explained. Sorry. Can't. Nothing I can do for you there. That's why I did Clue 9. So unless you can tell me the latitude and the, the longitude coordinates, what you got? You got, you got a plane that's, yeah, it's taking off from one place and landing in another place. We cannot prove the route. Sorry. Simple as that. This one's called Astronauts Plug Leak in International Space Station with its finger after a meteorite crash caused hole. And this is from the sun out in the UK, NASA leak, International Space Station slash meteorite. Yep, check that out if you get a chance. And some people have missed it. It wasn't a very big story. It was a super stupid story. Oh, it's awful. Uh, this one's called Neil Armstrong Movie Doesn't Feature American Flag. Now, this one's more interesting. Uh, and it's from Breitbart.com. Uh, the, the studios are downplaying it. Uh, literally, the, the title of the article is Neil Armstrong Movie Starring Canadian Ryan Gosling 
doesn't feature American flag and, and this is sent by Matthew. And he says, one would think that would be enough to suggest it was made in a Hollywood basin, basement all along. But yeah. Okay. So to, to answer this real quick, if you haven't looked it up, first one ever. So the, the, the clue that I made, uh, clue one, which was the empty theater talked about how there are no moon movies, right? None. And, and which is just staggering considering it's the greatest achievement in humankind. Uh, the closest we ever got were the right stuff in the early eighties and then Apollo th or 13 in the mid nineties. And then that was it. There's, there's no other space movies. And well, of course they have to make one absolutely positively have to make one because the 50th anniversary of Apollo, uh, the first Apollo mission, um, Apollo 11, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is in 69, right? So it's 50 years in 2019. I'm sorry, 50 years, 2019. And so they made a movie with A-lister uh, Ryan Gosling. Now here's where it's interesting, right? The movie's coming out real, real soon. And I encourage you guys to see it just to see what the hell they did with it. Even though it's still going to be mostly what he did down here and the big journey, you know, the hero's journey going from the earth to the moon. I don't think they're going to spend that much time up there. But it was noted when they showed this to the press that the American flag was not planted on the moon deliberately. You do not see the American flag on the moon, which is iconic. And the uh, was and you think, okay, maybe it's just an oversight or was killed in editing or whatever. Now, what's interesting is the Canadian director and the Canadian actor, Ryan Gosling, uh, defended that. In fact, the director and the producer is saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's a human achievement. It's, you know, hashtag all lives matter. Uh, it's a human achievement, not an American achievement. And I, I was the first one to say, no, no, whoa, whoa, back that up. If anyone deserves the credit, the sole credit for faking the moon missions, it's the Americans. It was an American production all the way around, right? I mean, that, that was it. I mean, and, and of course it is because if it was a human achievement, somebody else would have gone besides the United States. It's not like everyone was like, oh, you know, proud the United States did it. And it was the United States pat patting themselves on the back about this. So to come back, what revisionist history is this? And now they're saying, oh, you know, at one point they were considering planting the, the United Nations flag on the moon. Since when? Not in the 1960s they weren't. Even now they'd be hard pressed. Most people didn't even know what the United Nations flag looked like in 69. Literally did not know what it looked like. You never saw that thing anywhere. Unless you lived in New York, you did not know what this thing looked like. So don't tell me, don't tell me that uh, this was a, a, this is a human achievement. Come on, come on. The Americans, they were all over this thing, you know, beating their chest, puff, you know, pumping themselves up. Not, not picking on the Canadians. You know, they're a wonderful American suburb. Okay, moving on. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mr. Mark Sargent. I am Mint... Mint is not. Mint... Mint... I don't know. I think first name Mint. M-I-N-T-E. Minty? Whatever. And I am making research. So I want to start... Okay, not English. So I want to start from simple question. My question is, if Earth is flat, how could day and night exist? All right, everyone's listening to this already knows the answer to that question. And he, I would guess if he's dug into this, this is one of the best things about getting uh, questions way after the fact is you know that everyone, no one can let it go. And so they just keep watching, you know, I get emails, I get phone calls literally uh, from people that are only, they only watch the introduction to the clues. You know, the first 15, I'm sorry, 12 minutes. And they get to the end, it's like I give them my phone number and they're calling me. And, and I have to ask them I, 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 because I've seen it too many times. Like, okay, how far are you gotten? It's like, oh, well, we only got to the first 12 minutes. I go, okay, you haven't even watched Clue 1 yet. Watch the whole thing. Then if you have questions, call me. And usually what happens is they'll watch the clues and then they'll just start going into a whole bunch of more Flat Earth videos from different content providers. And then they'll be lost for two weeks and they don't call me back because it's you know they're just wrapped up in it and uh so when a guy asks me a question like that's that's what i kind of relate it to this one's called eyes wide open everyone hi mark hello from way over in the uk absolutely loving your fe clues and i am up to part six see right here he's emailing me at part six hasn't even made to part 11 yet 
I have always had a feeling that something somewhere wasn't quite right, that there was a kind of orchestration. I spent a lot of time researching the Twin Towers as I flat out didn't believe the narrative. Then actually for a break from the intensity and sadness, thought for... Whew, this is nothing, I, I'm sorry. Every once in a while, the grammar just, just floors me. Uh, for I would click on this YouTube suggestion about real flat earth for some lightheartedness. Well, that didn't have the desired effect. I've come across some Admiral Byrd information before and found it fascinating regarding hollow earth, but never this whole FE cover up and I'm hooked and really appreciate your work. Back to why I'm actually contacting you. I was saying he's recovering quite nicely. Uh, is I think spreading the word is key and I would like to know I all your episodes. Now he's fumbling again. Uh, of the Flat Earth Clues and or could be available on DVD. No, uh, you're going to have to get it from somebody else. I, I'm not making DVDs. Look, not many people look like for perfect example. I'm looking down the, the new machine I finally bought, you know, because I had an Alienware R4 and I kept that thing forever because I just loved it. It's the best, one of the best pieces of hardware I've ever seen in my life. It was just, just this beefy train of a, of a, of a rig. And I switched to this R7. The R7 is superior in just about every way, shape, and form. It's just not the same, though. The point is, it doesn't even come with a DVD. But most new computers don't even bother. So, uh, D who would have thought DVD and, and um, is like old school now? Most computers don't even have Blu-ray built into them. So, I mean, yeah, some laptops do. But that's usually saved for television. Uh, as I would order it straight away, perfect gift, handout to bring to friends and family. Well, I must get back to the next clue. Look forward to hearing back. Keep up the good work. Kind regards. Matt Ricketts. Actual Ricketts. Not spelled like the pirate disease, like scurvy and, you know, sc yar, yar. He's got scurvy and Ricketts and two glass eyes uh, and a peg leg. Thank you for that. But I don't have DVDs. You're just going to have to find it from that way. I'm, seriously, there's so many smartphones out there. Just point them to YouTube. Just point. Them. They'll, they'll get there. This one's called Question and Ideas. Hey there, Mark. The chan What are the chances? Wait a minute. Hey there, Mark. The chances of you reading this is slim. See, and I read it. I am a no one after all, but hey, at least I'm trying. I would love to set up a time where I can get about 30 minutes of your time to ask questions and pitch a wild idea that I think you might be interested in. It might change your view on the whole flat earth. That's from Don. All right. Any, anyone that's listened to me for a while knows what I'm going to say here, and that is no cliffhangers. You can't, I I've, I've get too many, I get too much correspondence. So you can't just write me and say, hey, I got this great idea and I'll tell you, but you got to write me back. Or you got to call me. It's like, nope, it's not how it works. Just get, throw the idea at me. Give me your best shot. If I like it, if it resonates with me, I will write you back and I'll say, yeah, it's really good. Or, you know, maybe we should follow up with this or this. And I do do that from time to time. But you can't, you can't bait me. I won't, I will not fall for it. And part of that comes from my whole uh, do not feed the troll attitude. I hate, you know, I know people get sucked into it. And that is like, don't feed the trolls. When they come at you, they're looking to come at you. I don't, maybe some of you, when you were in high school, didn't understand, you know, assholes that were out there. Guys that would bait you. You know, they, they just be looking just to poke. They're just picking just to see, trying to put, you know, there's why it's called pushing your buttons. They're trying to figure out what upsets you. And uh, I, I don't, I don't generally go for it. It's just, something's like, yeah, I see your game. Not, not doing it. This one's called Sure You Heard. Mark, did you see the space station report with the hole they fixed with the duct tape? Yes, I did. And at one point, one of the astronauts' retards on board had to put his finger in the hole. Yep. They also said it happened while they were asleep. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Vacuum of space, my ass. Hope all is well. Heard you've been enjoying some good smoked meat. <laughs> Best way to barbecue for sure. That's oh oh my god, I, that's from Trevor. That's from my cousin. I I can't believe. I'm, I am so sorry, Trev. I didn't even read this until just now. Yeah, and I was because I was like smoked meat. Yeah, yeah, because my uh, a couple family di different two two different family members got smokers, those really high end smokers, and that's like a big thing on the island right now. Everyone's smoking stuff. I mean, not just meat. I mean, anything. Let's smoke some potatoes. Let's smoke that bun. Smoke some bread. It's like, what? 
You don't have to smoke everything. Right, it tastes pretty good if you're into the whole smoky, smoky deal. Uh, let's see. That's another one called Patricia told me to email you. Mark, where do I find the NASA quote? It's CGI, but it has to be. I've seen, did I write her back? Yes, I did. The, uh, I've seen it in any number of times and now I can't find it. Thanks, Elaine. Uh, yeah, if you guys, if you've heard that, the quote, the audio quote, which is great that we got the audio quote, it's CGI, but it has to be, is, um, oh, that's from Robert Simmons, a NASA consultant. And the story, the, the quick little story behind that is that he was like me when back in the early 2000s, he was looking for an iconic picture of the earth, but for a different reason. I was looking for it back in 2000 because I wanted it for uh, my monitors for tech support. And he wanted it for the little tiny monitor because he was developed. He was he was asked to uh, create the very first iPhone logo on the front, which was basically the the CGI blue marble. Right? It's not even an official blue marble. It's just the the Scott Simmons blue marble, and he built a uh, blue marble basically from scratch, uh, an Earth model from scratch, and he CGI'd the whole thing. I mean, literally every part of it is just a whole bunch of layers of Photoshop. And that's what the, I'm sorry, it is Photoshopped, but it has to be. I'm sorry, not CGI, it is Photoshop. CGI and Photoshop are a little bit different. So, yeah, it's it's an amazing quote. And it's very, very damning because it, it proves one of my points, which was there no, were no pictures of the earth. Even when the iPhone came out, there were no pictures of the earth. Authentic pictures, good enough with good enough resolution that you could use. And so he had to create one. And that's the one they actually leaned on for a while. And only later did we, I mean, even, I even saw that image down at the Kennedy Space Center in Houston I, with uh, Patricia Steer and the documentary team where we looked at it <clears throat> and you can see he even got lazy. That's the part that kills me. You're commissioned to build the globe from scratch. Why would you get lazy and get to the Southern Hemisphere and just use the cloning tool on the clouds? Not just once, a bunch of times. I, and I know it's an old Photoshop trick. I get it. You know, you fill in, say, oh, the cloning tool, copy and paste, copy and paste. No one's going to notice. We did. But the question is, you, you were getting paid to do this. Why? Oh, people. Lazy production value. Sorry, Scott. I, I got I to gotta pick on you for this. Why Why would you be so lazy? Just just do, just make the clouds. What, was it a Friday at happy hour coming up? You had to take off. Oh, got to go. Uh, click, 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 click. No, cloud, cloud, clouds. All right, done. Send it. Yeah, look at that. It's the iPhone logo. Amazing. <sighs> this one's called No Subject. Uh, it's by Fred. Uh, Mark, just out of curiosity, do you think there'll be any Flat Earth conferences of any kind around Louisville, Kentucky? No, no, not not Louisville, but there'll be there'll be meetups. Sure, there'll be regional meetups around Louisville. Sure, I mean it's it's the East Coast sector. There should be there's all sorts of stuff out there in, in uh, Kentucky. In fact, I've done meetups uh, promos for Kentucky. And in fact, I I think I've done them this year. I got anyway. Sorry, I got on board with the flat Earth movement after listening to your clues. I've always been skeptical of the globe model we've been presented with our entire lives, and also used to hear bits of information that someone close to the family would slip occasionally who had held a high rank in the Air Force. The one thing I've never heard mentioned in the shows you or any others do is a visible rainbow-like effect uh, you can see in the sky sometimes on, on a clear day. It's almost as if there is some type of gas, I'm sorry, glass causing the effect since it occurs with no rain and can usually only be duplicated with a glass prism. I'm not sure if that's something you've ever noticed, but I thought it may be worth bringing forth and uh, to add to the already overwhelming amount of evidence that our world is anything but what we've been told. Best wishes to you. And that's from Frederick Ferguson. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we, I've, I've read this on other shows, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it again, which is, it's interesting. In fact, Jesse Spots was the first person to um, notice this it, in that when you're, you can make rainbows indoors. We have the technology now to make them indoors. It's not really high tech. The, the clouds indoors, that's really fascinating. You can see these like little freestanding clouds like you would normally see in cartoons. We can actually make those now. But we can do rainbows. You need a, a light source, moisture, but you also need a reflective surface. That's the difference, right? You need a reflective surface. You got to bounce the light around. 
So the question is, if when you're outside, you have a light source, you have the water molecules, where's the reflective surface when you're outside? Could it be the structure? Could it be the dome? The firmament? I think so. Very, very interesting. So look up sun dogs, for example, and tell me there's not a reflective surface happening there. This one's called Propaganda. And it was sent to myself and Patricia. Mark, thinking of running a propaganda pa campaign using their old stuff from Rob. And let me see here. There's a couple pictures attached. They're small. What did you do during an FE awakening? Oh, yeah, some old... Oh, yeah, and then there's an Uncle Sam. The globe needs you to start thinking for yourself. Uh, research Flat Earth. Yeah, I, I, I put the, both these in the slideshow. And if you guys send me slides, I, I've got a bunch, but I'm, I'm always taking more. And I'll just keep adding them in the slideshow. Just, just shoot them to me. And most of the time, you'll see them during Strange World. I run them for about uh, 12 seconds each. And I don't even really loop them anymore. I've gotten so many. So thank you. That's from, that's from Rob. This one's called, Do You Really Believe What You Are Posting? Oop, this could be a troll. Let's find out. Hi, Mark. I served in the Navy for 30 years, and I know that the Earth is a globe. I've been to the Arctic and Antarctic and have watched ships disappearing over the horizon. No amount of telescopic magnification would bring those ships back into view. Is this just a money-making exercise for you, or are you really serious? Thanks. And it's from Mark Kessler. I, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely serious, and I, I wrote this guy back, and I said, look, and I, I sent him some some videos of of ships not disappearing over the horizon, and in fact, that's one of the biggest arguments I, I throw at people. And let me just take a minute to to say this: uh, you want you want to go after somebody really quickly, you don't, you don't have a lot of time to discuss the flat Earth with them. Say, okay, use the Rob Skiba line, which again, I'm stealing back from him because I I haven't really used it that much, but I, I think it is good. He gives me credit for it. I don't know if I was the original one that came up with it. Is can you? Uh, can you tell me the Earth is a globe without using NASA? Can you, because th you, you got to throw out NASA? And they say, why would I have to throw out NASA and all the space agencies? I go because NASA didn't invent the globe, right? Right. So you say, what do you mean? It's like, well, NASA only took the picture of the Earth in 1972, and they were they were formed in 1958. But it's not like we knew it was a globe. We just woke up one day in 1958 or 1972. Take your pick, and just said, oh, it's a globe. You know, thank God. No, no, no. We didn't. We didn't think that it was a globe for 500 years before that, or 450 years before that, right? So, how did you know it was a globe before NASA? Before NASA, because everybody leans on the space programs now. We've seen the ISS, we've seen Apollo, we've seen Germ, uh, Gemini, and Mercury, and Soyuz, and, and the space shuttle program. It's like, no, 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 no. How did you know beforehand? And then they have to reach back further, and now it gets tougher. And they say, and this is the reason why I'm bringing this up, they say, uh, well, the ship's going over the horizon. I said, yeah. I absolutely, I'm with you there. I'd absolutely say you're correct until about 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I, I would have said, yeah, the ships do go over the horizon. You might be right. But then HD cameras came out with digital zoom. And they started getting better and better and better. And those ships that used to go over the horizon and the sun that used to go over the horizon, they don't anymore. You can bring the sun back up too. Uh, you know, it's not as not as great as the ship's thing, but it is pretty evident. You know, you're you at the water level. You see the sun starts setting. Atmospheric distortion starts kicking in. You crank up the zoom. That sun pops up. How does that work? Exactly. And so, yeah, the, but the boats go over the horizon. And again, this is why by one of my cousins... Uh, who was a, a career uh, yachtsman, career yachtsman. Uh, that's what she did for, for decades. Uh, she doesn't talk to me right now because she it's, it's too much for her. She spent most of her life on the water and she, uh, she, can't, she can't get out of it. She can't. Yeah, and this guy, yeah, if you're in the Navy for that long, you, you immediately she, you say you see ships going to the horizon and you do. From your naked eyes, yes, you do. Your, your eyes are very, very limited what they can accomplish. And he's not going to be able to snap out of it. But anyway, so I sent him some stuff. And if it's rallying around in his head, I mean, if he's compelled to email me, that it's in his head. So that's a good thing. 
This one's called the Independence. NASA working to contain small links leak on International Space Station. Yep. Mark, don't know if you've seen this yet or not. Funny how the ISS survived in the vacuum of space. NASA working to contain small leak on International Space Station. And that's from the Independent newspaper. NASA is working to contain a small leak. Yeah, read the full story. Yep. That's from Adam. Thank you, Adam. I don't mind if, you know, assume that if you're sending me emails with, with information that I, I haven't seen it and that way I won't miss it because who knows, maybe if only one person sent it to me, maybe I'd miss it. This one's called Satellites. Hi, Mark. My name is Bill White. I live in Alabama. Good college football team. That's about it. I have been watching Flat Earth videos for some time now. I have a question that maybe you can answer. I've seen the video stating that there are no satellites in space. I remember back in the 1980s when people were buying those large dishes to pick up those signals to watch satellite TV. Yep, I remember those as well. I remember that in order to watch certain programs, they would scan the sky to be looking at the right satellite to pick up the program that they wanted to watch. Doesn't that indicate that there are satellites in the sky? Yeah, probably. Sure. But what? how are they up there? That's the bigger thing. You know, are they up there? Were they put up there on the top of rockets? Or were they just launched with the uh, NASA balloon projects, which can lift upwards of four tons? They can launch huge satellites. I think pretty sure they're pretty sure they're using hydrogen when they do it. Because, you know, you can use hydrogen. Hydrogen has double the lift of helium. Uh, and as long as you're and really, if you guys are doing weather balloon projects, you probably use hydrogen. I, I know, you know, it's flammable and all that, but you know, just make sure you don't puncture it next to any open flame and you're probably going to be fine, but it's double the lift. And, uh, as long as you're not carrying people on it, you know, like the Hindenburg, you're fine. Uh, I admit that this consumes my free time. What little I have, my wife thinks I have lost it and does not want me to tell anyone that I might believe the earth is flat. I don't blame her. I have, however, spilled the beans. It is hard not to talk about this because it's so interesting. And there you go. That's the reason why people are so compelled. It's like the coolest secret ever. It's kind of like when you're a kid and you hear something really, really cool and you just die and you're just busting, busting at the seams. You so want to tell people. That's why Flat Earth is so, so great compared to any other conspiracy is it just it turns us into kids again. And, and people, you know, it's like you go to the playground, otherwise known as your office, otherwise known as your your family dinner. It's like, man, you know, you're just waiting for an excuse. Somebody says something and, you know, even if it's an awkward segue, it's like, no, I got something interesting to tell you. And then they do. Uh, anyway, that's it on that one. Still got some time left for these. This one's called Zen Garcia's Secrets Revealed. Hi, Mark. Just finished listening to you and Patricia on Zen Garcia's show. I'm writing in response to your comment of wanting to be a fly on the wall when it comes to listening to young people after watching Shane Dawson's video. I can give you one example. My daughter, after listening to Shane's Flat Earth video, decided along with a couple of her friends to start a new after-school club named Conspiracy Club. Awesome. That's great. Uh, she wanted a group to be able to discuss alternate ideas from what they've been taught in the classroom. The group was approved in her first meeting. Uh, it was September 18th. She's made flyers to promote the club and response is overwhelming. Thank you, Mark and Patricia. My daughter is growing up to be a free thinker. That's from Donna in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm going to write her back and ask how that club's going. And the reason I'm going to do that is because of the video that I just stumbled across. No, no, even sent it to me. It was a middle school. I don't even know where they are. You want to look up something fun, uh, type in middle school flat earth, uh, set the filter to, I don't know, a month or something like that, but you'll find it. It's also on my channel. I just, I mirrored the video. It was some kids and I, I think they're East coast, but I'm not, I'm, I don't know for sure, but they set up a lunch club. It literally the flat, their own flat earth club. And they had a whole bunch of people in there. And uh, they happened to mention that they were going to uh, debate the physics club. <laughs> They're going to slaughter them. It's going to be awful because, you know, the physics club, that, that's just hardcore nerds right there. And I think, that, again, it's, it's got to be middle school because they look like 7th, 8th, and ninth graders. And they also uh, gave a shout out to me. Because I went into one of their their first meetings, their their uh, in their videos, and I actually just typed, you know, rubber stamped it, and I said, "Yeah, long live flat Earth!" Right, threw it in there. I didn't really know how serious they were or not, and they loved it. And so uh, I reproduced their second video, and now they're going to create a brand new flat Earth channel on YouTube. 
uh, talking you know, about their meeting stuff. So yeah, very curious. Love the fact that middle schoolers are picking up on this. It's great. This one's called, Mark, you seen this it's a clip of John Glenn on Frasier series. Ooh, uh, the elites love hiding the truth in plain sight is comedy. And, uh, and that's from Bill. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, very, very interesting that John Glenn was on the series in, from um, the 90s called Frasier. Very, very cool. This one's called, it was a funny episode. I remember that one. This one's called MSG from the, F oh, message from the force. Why did you have to abbreviate message? Why did you just type, whatever. Uh, Mark, you have the patience and tolerance of a god. <laughs> we are all grateful for your efforts. If there's anything I can do to help with your efforts, don't hesitate to ask. And that's from Jibby Jedi. And he sent me a picture. Let's look at it real quick. Uh, oh, it's a um, uh, Johnny Depp, Captain Jack Sparrow uh, doing a little, uh, you know, tip to the hat to me. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think he's talking about one of the interviews I did where the guys were just going off on me. I was like, look, I can't get mad at you because I would have been there. All right. Let's see which one we're going to end on. Uh, we got a couple more. Uh, let's see. Major moment just happened. SpaceX urgent read on or off air. Okay. Mark, my thought, why is SpaceX hired NASA astronauts to fly their Dragon spacecraft? Something does not add up here. Isn't SpaceX and NASA rivals in the space race? Yes, they are. SpaceX is totally different company. Why are they hiring at NASA astronauts? What the hell is going on? Ex question mark, question mark, exclamation point. And here's the deal on that, which is, again, it is a total hypocrisy. Sort of like why all the space capsules right now land in Russia. Uh, we're supposedly still in this weird Cold War that's been going on forever with Russia. There is no Cold War. We're not enemies with Russia. We never have been. Uh, we're never, ever going to square off with Russia. They are our secret allies that nobody ever wants to talk about, but whatever. Uh, if you guys don't like Russia, that's because of your conditioning. Don't forget your conditioning. You've been told literally since the 19, oh, wow, 50s, you know, better dead than red. And don't you think it's weird that we've never squared off with them, with exception up for the movies? That's it. You know, don't forget like Rambo, you know, he jumped from first blood to Rambo and he goes, you know, we all those anti-Russian movies. And oh, let's not forget one of my favorites, Red Dawn, where Russia paratroopers landed in, in Colorado. Well, you know, they cut the country in half or tried to cut the country in half and they were battling in Colorado. Oh, Lord. So, um... Where was I going with this? Oh, okay, so yeah, let's get off the Russian thing for for a while. You know, forget about that for now. But I absolutely, Russia is we we've never squared off in them, and we're we're not going to. the uh, The SpaceX thing, yeah, NASA and SpaceX are absolute rivals, right? And yet NASA, you, because remember, if SpaceX does what they set out to do, NASA's budget is in jeopardy. No one wants to give up fifty two million dollars a day or fifty three million dollars a day or whatever it's up to now. Uh, no one wants to give up that money. So why in the world why would NASA be helping SpaceX? And and not only just helping them with pilots, they're actually letting them land down at uh, the space center down in Florida. You know that look up the the SpaceX rockets, those booster rockets that supposedly touch down right next to each other. Not only did they let them land in, a, in on on their pads in in Florida, they even drew logos. They were like SpaceX logos, like their own parking spaces were already there. It's a conflict of interest. It's a complete conflict of interest, and it should never happen. And it doesn't. Not in any business sense. Companies don't help each other like that. They don't. You say, well, it's a noble cause. It's space. It's like, no, 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 no. SpaceX is a private company, right? They're, they're there to make money off the deal. And yet NASA has no problem with helping them in, in all aspects. And of course, you know, Elon's in trouble now. But anyway, we're not going to end on that one. That was kind of negative, but it's true. This one's called X info and thumbs up. Uh, no, I'm not going to read that one right now. Let's read this one. Slideshow request. Oh, yeah, slideshow request. Uh, hi, Mark. Thanks for always keeping it flat. Could you please send me the slideshow uh, one of your recent guests said he used to talk to people about Flat Earth? Thanks again. Best Chi. Uh, yeah, I, and I did. the. Anyone who wants that, you can um, just ask for the, the, the slideshow. That's from Just Jack. Jack says he has 12 photos or pictures on pictures. That's for Caroline right there. Pictures. I'm supposed to enunciate that more. 
on his uh, phone that he can show people and convert them in 12 photos. So if you want those, you can say, yeah, send me the 12 photos. And, and they're good. I've got them on my machine. I'll shoot them to you in an email. Uh, let's see. That's Chibi Jedi. I already did that one. Okay, let's end on this one, right? Because, uh, yeah, this, this one will kind of tell you where it is. So... This, the, the title's called From Fox News, Neil Armstrong's Sons Defend First Man Film from Claims That It's Anti-American. Okay, so this is from Fox News, because Fox is going to jump on this. Fox News, of course, very, very pro-American, you know, go team, wave the flag, literally. So when there's no flag on the moon, Fox jumps on this as, why is there no American flag on the moon? And from uh, and Neil Armstrong, who died some years ago, uh, isn't here to defend himself, obviously, because the moon's about him. So the title of the article is The Sons of Legendary Astronaut Neil Armstrong are defending a forthcoming film about their father's historic moon landing, saying that it is not anti-American in the slightest. Right. <clears throat> and that's totally propaganda. It is totally staged. The the producers in the movie, because remember, this is, you know, uh, the, the Armstrong family got some money for this, uh, probably a considerable sum. Because they're using their their father's likeness, it will not likeness. They're actually you know it's supposedly an autobiography of them. So here's what I thought was interesting. We'll end on this. So they 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 put out this story. Oh yeah, well the family you knows totally backing Neil Armstrong, saying well yeah of course because the studio paid the family. You know who didn't back this movie. Uh, was because they were saying, oh, our, our father absolutely would have, uh, I'm not going to read the article, you guys can look it up uh, yourself, but they, but they were saying that, oh yeah, our father absolutely would have defended this and said, well, you know, it didn't have to be an American flag, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but what I thought was interesting was a tweet by uh, Chuck Yeager, who is still alive, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Chuck Yeager, who wrote, that's not the Neil Armstrong I knew. Meaning Neil would have been, apparently, I, I, and I, this shouldn't surprise anyone, Neil Armstrong was a freaking Boy Scout. He absolutely was a straight shooter, and I don't think, he, out of all the people, all the astronauts they told, he did not like going along with any of this stuff. He became a recluse, and he didn't do he, very, very few public appearances. He was the guy that says, you know, we, we must remove one of Truth's hidden protective layers. Very, very cryptic. And... Uh, and he was such a straight shooter that people that knew him, like Chuck Yeager, one of the most respected pilots in the history of pilots, uh, when he his little quotes, you know, was very short and to the point. Is that's not the Neil, you know, what they're saying, their family saying about Neil. That's not the Neil I knew. Like Neil would have never gone along with the, you know, you want to make a movie about him, that's fine. You want to make a movie about him without the American flag, Pfft, good luck. So anyway, that's it. That's what we're going to end on. Uh, thank you for everybody that wrote so far. And thank you for all the people I'm going to read in the future. Feel free to shoot me any questions, comments, whatever to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next Sunday, stay flat. <laughs>